All right, hey guys, I'm doing an entry for uh, 10 obscure records that no one else in the VC owns, and it was started by TKR Video Central. Central, and I don't know the cat, but I just subbed his channel, and it looks good, and it's a really cool thread. I got turned on to it by Vinyl Richie, and I just watched Michael Pilmer do an excellent entry, and he showed, uh, he not part of his entry, but he did show it. It was the uh, Leif Garrett, uh, seven inch fan club seven inch but um cool cool topic from tkr and i just want to jump on it the other day this isn't part of the entry but the other day i showed this one's really rare i posted a video just like two weeks ago of this single but this is uh soft records number 101 i think 1957 i can't remember out of fort worth texas and it was only one copy ever known before this one, and this may even be that copy for all I know, because I bought this off eBay. And it's Crazy Daisy by Richie Starr. It's like a rockabilly, Bo Diddley, 50s rock and roll tune. And and that's about all I, I mean, I know a little bit about the label and things, people help me out, but there is absolutely no literature, no mention, no reference of this single anywhere. So that's pretty, uh, but I did show that. And this is one, this is now my 10th. I showed this a couple years ago. This is an EP, very rare, out of Iran. And this was an Iranian EP from 1969. And why I really wanted it, it's got this great track by Johnny Thunder called I'm Alive, which was like a Tommy James number, but this is fuzzed out, soul, garage rock. It's just absolutely wild from 1969. And how this was released in in Iran, this is pre-revolution stuff, but it is absolutely wild. And it's with the equals, the tremolos, and this James Bobby, which I believe is actually Rosie Greer. And it's very rare to get one of these picture sleeves from Iran, but this one does not come up. And there it is on the T4 label, and it's got an import stamp. And I actually, I think I got this out of Turkey. I bought this from Turkey. Really, really, really cool piece. Um, this one I also showed in a video, I think it was called like Help With A Reggae Song. Ultra rare reggae number, I think it's from around 1971. It's known as uh, Diner 1178 and 1179 because that's the matrix numbers in the dead wax. But no, reggae collectors know of this song. It has exchanged hands a few times, but nobody knows who the artist is. And it's just great boss reggae, skinhead reggae, 1971. Very rare Jamaican pressing. And cool that nobody knows who this is on the planet. This is a bizarre one on, there's also one that really doesn't exist or there's very few mentions of this. It's called on Zorch Records and it's by Tanya White. And this is Zorch Records number 2002. So there's probably Azorch Records 1001, but uh, there's no record of that at all. There is another Zorch Records, which may be the same label that started putting stuff out in uh, 1966 on, but this is 1961. And the 1966 ones, I think the Matrix numbers start at 101 and go on. So I'm not sure if this is the same Zorch label from five years earlier, but it's a cool track, 50s novelty chick rock and roll, because he kissed her in her new Chrysler and songs that have makes of cars or songs about cars are collectible to certain groups. But I love this one because it's got a track called Good Night My Darling, which is a teen death ballad. Girlfriend singing about her dead boyfriend and it's got the spoken part where she's talking to him. And it's kind of morbid, ballady with steel guitar on it. It's just bizarre. And Zorch Records, there has to be some connection to Norvis Nervous and uh, Red Blanchard and the Zorch goes through, that word will be carried on through the psychobilly years in the 80s, but I'll discuss that in another video, but very rare. Here's another record that does not exist, and I believe there was a promo copy found, but this is um, Cindy Joanne and Daddy O doing the Pink Flamingo and Dancing Crane on Cap Records, and the B-side is Buddy Greco Wow. And this is actually Buddy Greco making his attempt at a rock and roll number in 1957. Buddy Greco, the swinging jazz singer, piano player, just he was really big. 
in the late 50s, 60s. But he took a chance at rock and roll in 57, and it's a Bill Haley type number, and he's got kids in it singing with him. So it's like they didn't take it seriously, but it's got hot guitar, and it's, it's a true attempt at rock and roll. But whether Buddy regretted it, it was too ridiculous, it got withdrawn, it just doesn't exist. But these two songs did pop up on, a, on an EP that was released in Sweden only. It's very bizarre, not gonna be worth a lot of money, but historically, just kind of weird to see Buddy Greco go rock and roll, but that doesn't exist, this record. Here's uh, Punk Rock, and it's, this one exists, you could get it, but you could drop up some money, but it's very rare, and this would be Revelation Records number one, Warzone, and this is the original pressing. And let's see what it's got. There it is. And this would be, I think, 1987. It's a whole EP and it's got a great booklet. It'll fold out more than a booklet. All right, do we need to see this? Probably not, just lyrics. But this is very rare. But it does pop up, so you can find this. Oh, what else we got? Oh yeah, I gotta cover up my address, but this one was uh, Grim Reaper. I sent away for this in 1984. It arrived at my house in October 9th, 19, or October 10th, 1984. And it was advertised in, I don't know, probably Hit Parader, but it, this is before the first album came out. You could send away for this uh, Flexi pre-release and it's got Steve Grimm at the singer talking, going through the samples of a couple of songs and about them going on tour. And it came with some sort of contest. And I think I kept the original, I was keeping, who even knew? I was keeping hype stickers. This is from the first album. I guess I kept the hype sticker back in 84 when I got the first album. But uh, Grim Reaper from RCA Records that you had to send away for. Um, here's a very rare song. It's kind of bizarre, it's like a island, it's like a kind of a Caribbean feel disco song from 1980, but it's just an excellent tune for like uh, drinking cocktails on like on, on the beach or something. And it's actually was, I don't think anymore, but it was a coveted song by a lot of DJs over in Europe. But it's called This Island Is Our Home by Kip Carmen and Danny Horton. 1980 and it's just a I think they're from Long Island and it's actually singing about this island is our home even though it sounds like they're singing about some Caribbean island they're singing about Long Island but that's on Reveille Records and this is pretty rare excellent disco we track like but slow smooth here's one of my favorite uh, rockabilly releases from the 90s and this one turned out to be very rare which is on tail records what is this Tale number 25, Don Cavalli, The Pharaoh. And it's a, a double 10 inch. It kind of reminds me of the old uh, 78s, but it's just absolute killer stuff. And I'm not sure if any of this ever got reissued on CD or definitely not on LP, but absolute killer. And for some reason, this one is rarer than a lot of the other Tale stuff. And it's very hard to get. And then I have a Heavy metal, I have a test pressing of Exciter, what's it, Feel the Knife, which was Combat, maybe, Combat 1985. It's a test pressing of Feel the Knife EP, and I got it for one dollar. So not much to see here, but I don't think anyone will have that. It's not even the album, it's just the EP, but it's killer. They were still, they were great in 1985, Canadian metal trio. And then my last one, my prize possession, what the hell did I do with it? And someone may have this, it comes up, but uh, you gotta drop some money on it, but to have it in this nice condition, this is, uh, what is this? Oh, geez, I, I forget the year, what is it, 1955? But it's, uh, let's see, it's a screaming hawk. Screaming Jay Hawkins, I Put a Spell on You, and Little Demon. And that's on OK Records. And it's just 
absolutely. I mean, it's it's VG or VG plus, but it plays absolutely beautifully. And uh, this is probably my favorite record. You know, people talk about MoFi and all this. You crank this up on the tube player at those deep cuts going at 78 RPM and the, the voice of Screamin' Jay Hawkins, this sounds better. I, I wouldn't trade this for every MoFi in the world. But there you go, this is prized possession. So everyone uh, check out TKR. Oh, I might want to call on people. I would love if anyone stuck around this long, but uh, Paul Madamson, if he could enter this or like show 10 obscure records no one else has, it would be like a breeze for him. And maybe Alan Static Traveler, if you guys are listening, I'd love to see you guys do an entry. Cheers, everybody.